Greetings, we're gonna model a simple product based off a product image I got from Design Within Reach. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna hit it aligned up on the Y. So I've got my X axis here and my Z axis here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do Shift A and I'm going to add in a reference image. I have a separate video about using reference images you can check out, really, really handy. And let's see, where did I put my images? Here we go, products. Oh, I put salt shaker here. It's, I think it actually does both. It's both a salt shaker, salt grinder, and a pepper grinder. But anyway, uh, we'll see. Okay, so there is our product. You can see it's stuck a little bit in our cube. So I'm just gonna move it using G to move and Oops, move it along the y-axis, there we go. Now it's right behind our cube, right? And now I'm also gonna move this up on the z-axis using gz. Actually, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna turn the cube off so I can see it better. And what I wanna do is align right up on this, the bottom of this right up on our crosshairs. So again, g and z. Line it up there, nice. That way if we set down a tabletop, uh, we should have our model right on top of the tabletop surface. Okay, looking pretty good now. Back to Y. I'm gonna go ahead and use the default cube, even though what we want is <coughs> a cylinder, because there's a fun way to create a cylinder that I wanna show. How to do so let's go ahead and move our cube to line up exactly with our reference image and there's a good rule of thumb in blender uh, when in doubt zoom in <laughs> because you can get a lot more precise by zooming in you can see here I had to do a little bit of adjustment just to get our cube lined up right. But here we are, looking good. Okay, so a fun thing you can do with a cube is turn it into a cylinder. And I'm gonna show you how to do that. First of all, you wanna go into edit mode. So I'm use the tab key to go into edit mode. And we are by default in vertex select. And what we wanna do is we wanna go to face select. Uh, you can do that with the letter three key. Again, one, two, three, send you vertex. One is vertex mode. Two is edge mode, three is vertex mode, or face mode, excuse me. And what we wanna do is we wanna select the top and bottom faces and remove it. So I click the top one, I'm holding down the shift key, and now, whoops, actually, I've got the top one, I'm gonna hold down the shift key now, select the bottom one. And so you can see I've got the top and bottom selected, and we're gonna do the classic delete using the X key and then faces. And now we should have a hollow box and we do. Cool. So then what we want to do is we want to scale this box. This box, as you can see, is wider than our salt shaker. So one of the things we can do very easily is just go back into tab view mode, tab to go into object mode, excuse me, hit the S key and you'll see now we have scaled down, but we've created a new problem for ourselves, right? Now this box is scaled down, but it's scaled down in all directions toward the center, so now the bottom of our box is too low, but no big deal. We just do G and Z, bring it down, line it up on our crosshairs again when in doubt, zoom in, pull it back up, there we go. Looking good, looking good. Okay, then what we want to do is let's go ahead and go back into edit mode, hit the tab key. And let's go ahead and use vertex select. Again, that's the one key right here, the one to go to vertex mode. And we're gonna do a little click and hold down and select these four vertices. Now that typically, that, that gesture I did right there can get you into trouble because sometimes you can select things you didn't know you meant to select. Like for instance, if you, I do this right here, I'm gonna swipe over them. You can sometimes accidentally select vertices that you aren't 
wanting to select when you do that. So just be careful when you do that. Make sure you're selecting the ones you want to select. Okay, so let's go back. I'm gonna pull it down so we can see everything nice. Okay, and then because we're in vertex mode, if we do a move gesture with a G key, we can actually stretch this cube up uh, without actually doing an extrude because we're moving the, ver the vertices up. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna hit G and I'm gonna hit Shift Z. Oh, that's a mistake. G, Z, my bad. Uh, Shift Z, if you look down at the bottom, very bottom of your screen, you can see all the different key options you had. And Shift Z actually um, is a, a Z plane select. A regular Z is just a Z select. And so now I have stretched it up to where we want to be. It's all good. And now we have a box that's roughly the same dimensions as our image. Okay, so now we want to turn this box into a cylinder. So a cool way to do this is to use our friend the bevel key. And bevel is command B for bevel. Oh, uh, but first actually, so we're in vertex like mode. And what we actually want is we don't want to be in vertex like mode. Let's go ahead and go into face select mode. And actually, let's just select the whole thing. And now if we do command B, and we do bevel, do you see how it's making a kind of interesting, it's the beveling and then it's like over beveling to the point that it's crossing over back onto itself. And that's okay. Go ahead and commit that. And now here's a thing that is important to know in Blender. There's this little pop-up box down here. And what you want to do is you want to expand it. And you can now see all of our different bevel options. And it's a little bit hidden at first, but once you get used to it, this is a, a really useful thing to use. And so like one of the things you can do here is you can say, well, we don't want to bevel just one segment. We want to make it round, right? So let's say 24 segments. So now we have a rounded bevel with lots of different segments. And you can see this is these overlappings here that we've created here. And I want to show you something really quick. So do you see these little points right here? We're going to get rid of these overlaps by doing clamp overlap. And by clamping the overlap, it says get rid of this overlap and smooth it out a little bit. And now we have ourselves a cylinder. But we did this tricky thing, and it, it caused a little bit of a problem. And what it caused is we've got some actual overlapping vertices now that you're not really going to be able to see. I'm going to go back into vertex select mode. I'm going to do select all. And to get rid of um, mysterious or hidden vertices, what you can do is what's called a merge. And to do a merge, just do uh, M for merge. And you want to merge by distance. And the default distance is quite small. And so when you do that, you can now see that we've removed eight vertices. And it doesn't look like it's changed at all, but we've cleaned up our model a little bit. So if you ever run into a situation where you're trying to manipulate your model and it seems like you've got vertices that you can't quite get your head around or you want to get rid of, doing a merge will really help. Okay, so now we've got this pretty nice cylinder, right? But it's hollow. And what we need is for it to have some thickness to it, right? And then it probably has, you know, quite where all the kind of guts of the grinder are, are down in here. Uh, we don't care so much about the internals, but what we do care is we want to create out this kind of hollow space down here, right, in our image. So the easiest way to do that is to select all of our vertices, because we're in vertex select mode. Now notice I missed some right there, so make sure you get them all. All right, now what you want to do is, whoops, let me go back to the Y. Okay, is we want to extrude in this direction, and that's called a scale extrusion. So we're going to just hit E for extrude. Oh, no. Oh, yep. Mess that up. So E for extrude and then S for scale. 
And you see how it pulls in like this? And so we're creating a thickness here like this. So I'm gonna, you know, create something that looks about right. Doesn't need to be perfect. And now we've extruded in. But this isn't truly thick. Let me show you something. If you flip to the bottom, oops, let me get my mouse lined up right. You see how it's it's really hollow. There's not actual thickness there, and that's okay. So we've got these vertices selected. So if we want to extrude back down again to make it look thick, right? We want to extrude down on the Z axis. So now just do E for extrude, Z for down, and down we go. And now what we've done is we've made it look solid, which is what we want. And if you look on the inside, oh, you can see we actually overshot the mark and we've extruded all the way down past our the base of our model. And let's take a look at that. Go back to the Y, and you can see now we've over extruded. So what you can do is you can do Command Z, undo it, and do E for extrude, E for down, and let's just go part way. That's good enough, we're faking it, right? So now you can see it's actually hollow on the inside, but it looks thick and exactly like we want from the top, and that's fine for now. Okay, so another thing I wanted to highlight is often you'll do something like an extrude, and if you click off of it, you're like, oh, I need to reselect all of these interior dots. And you might wonder, how do I do that? Well, one of the things you can use is the circle select tool, which is the C key and see how I've got a little circle on my crosshairs. And now you can kind of paint around. And grab these vertices. And then hit Enter to commit that grab. And then again, do E for extrude, Z for down. And you just extrude it down again, and you're good. All right, so that is creating a cylinder from a cube and extruding it to make it look like a solid shape. Okay, we had some leaf blowers and stuff outside, so I paused the recording for a second, but I'm back. And uh, let's keep going. Okay, so we have our cylinder and we're started to make this grinder product. And we need to make this cylinder look Quite a bit more like wood and there's a few ways you could do it but the way i'm going to pick is a procedural way of doing it as opposed to using an image of wood and wrapping that image around the cylinder we're going to use a texture uh, to do it so the first thing we want to do is let's check out our lighting we have the default blender lighting let's go ahead and flip over into viewport shading mode and if we zoom out a little bit, we can see we've got our light source over here. Zoom out some more, you can see it's over here. And let's go ahead and move that lighting with the G key. Move it to something a little bit more like a three-point lighting setup. And now let's go ahead and duplicate that. Do Command-C, Command-V, and a G. And we're gonna set our fill light in over here. A little bit over here. I'm actually going to need to move it down. If you remember, fill lights are often quite a bit lower, closer to our the base of our product. And also what we want to do is reduce the brightness of our fill down from 1,000 to say, let's do 300. And notice we're getting some shadowing here. And I think that's because, aha, our key light is also 300, and that should be 1,000. Cool. That might be a little bright, but I think that's okay for our purposes. We're not going to do a, th a third point light, a fill light, or sorry, a um, rim light in the back because we don't care about that right now, and also we have this reference image in the way. It's just not going to do anything for us. So. Okay, let's go back to that. Okay, now we need to make our wood 
uh, look. So let's go ahead and go into shading, the shading tab up here. This might be a new tab for you. And what we have up here is we are now in viewport shading mode and you can still flip over into uh, rendered mode. Like I said before, we were in material preview mode. Let's hang out in material preview mode for now. And let's do this. So first thing we need is click back on our object and nothing's going on in here. So we need to click new and we're gonna get a new material. This is the default material in Blender, principled BSDF material. I'm gonna pull this up so we can zoom in. We're gonna add some nodes down here. These are called nodes. This is a node, this is a node. We're gonna add some in. You chain nodes together with these little wires. Uh, just like you might chain together, you know, a modular synthesizer or you know, a phone switchboard or something like that, you're connecting them up. So the values that are outputs on this side feed into inputs. These are all our inputs on the left. Okay, so first thing we wanna do is we have this kind of putty gray color and we want to change that. We wanna make this base color, not just a different color, but we need to make it a couple of colors at least, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is do Shift A, do Search, and we're gonna add a color ramp that color ramp is just a gradient, right? And we're gonna connect that color output into this base color input. But right now nothing really changed because this is black, this is white, not really what we want. So let's go ahead over to color.adobe.com. This is a, a wood value I was looking into. If you do the explore option up here, you get search, you can type wood. And I wanted to show you what these results look like. These are all just different, um, little color palettes for wood. And this one I liked, it's a kind of Baltic, Be Baltic birch wood color. So let's click on that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a light color and a dark color. So the first one, let's take the light one. I click copy there. And instead of white, we're gonna go ahead, click on this swatch, make sure we're in hex, not HSV or RGB. We wanna go over to hex and then we're gonna paste this value in. And now we have light over here, but we have black over here. So we wanna click all the way over on this black swatch and then click on the black, go back to Adobe Color, take this dark brown color, click on the swatch, make sure we're in hex mode, paste it in. Notice Adobe Color copies them, they place a pound sign at the beginning, that's totally fine. Blender will throw that out. And there we go, we've got dark brown on the left, light brown on the right. And you'll notice not that much has changed, but we do have a general brown color up here that we're working with. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make this less smooth. And to make something less smooth, you want to add in a noise texture. So we're going to do Shift A, search, type in the word noise, and click Noise Texture. And we're going to place that noise texture right here. And we're going to connect the noise factor on the output here to the factor input here. And you'll notice now you're getting something that looks a little bit like a sponge. And I'm gonna flip over just occasionally into uh, rendered mode so we can see what our lighting looks like in here. It makes it look a little less gray, doesn't it? Let's hang out in there for a while. Okay, next what we wanna do is we want to add a mapping node. All right, hit search and add mapping. We've got that in there. And we're gonna take the vector out in our mapping node to the vector in on our noise texture. And that just smoothed it out, but that's okay. We'll, we'll get that fixed. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another node, quick search, called a texture coordinate node. We're gonna stick that in here and we're gonna connect the object here to the vector here. And you're gonna see this vector value roll up, go whoop, and there it is. And now we've got this it looks less like a sponge and more almost like mm, sandpaper or something here. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is go back into our noise texture and make some adjustments. So one thing we could do is increase the detail up to, I don't know, 16. 
All right, and then let's take the roughness and increase it gradually a little bit just to see what happens. Something like mm, 0.75, getting close. Let's type it in, 0.75. And now do you see how we're getting something that's looking even more noisy, but also smoother, less clumpy. And now let's take our scale and increase that to something like, oh, that's way too much. Let's do like 1.6. Okay, yeah, now it's looking good. It's looking a little bit more swirly, but we're not getting, you'll notice in wood grain, you've got these kind of longer lines, this kind of the vertical orientation of the grain here isn't really coming through at all here. So we can make some adjustments to try to emulate that a little bit. And to do that, let's take the Y of our mapping and really crank that up to something. Let's see. Oh yeah. Now we're getting this kind of wood grain look down the left and right hand sides. Uh, 7.6 is good, let's try seven. Okay, cool. <clears throat> You'll notice though it's looking quite smooth, right? We want it to be a little bit more rough or to have a bump to it. So let's add in a bump node. Whoops, let's do Shift A, search, bump. And we've got the bump added and we're gonna take the normal output into our normal input. And that doesn't look like it did very much, and that's okay. It maybe did, yeah, you've got a little bit more striation in there. But then what we also want to do is take the factor of our noise and add it in to the height of our bump. And look at that, that is looking a lot more like kind of very, very, very unsanded wood, very coarse wood. And so to make that a little bit less coarse, what we want to do is we want to take the strength down from one to say mm, 0.25. And that smooths it out by quite a bit. And that's actually looking quite a bit more like wood. We've got these longer kind of wood grainy effects here and here. We could do some adjusting with the color here if we wanted to see what we could get out of this. Um, light it up perhaps a little bit, maybe add a little bit more yellow in there. But this gets you to a pretty close simulation of wood. And what I'll do is I'm going to leave this up here because one of the things that's tricky with this type of thing is having all your values set correctly. So I'm going to leave it like this for a few seconds at the end of the video. So if you want to take a screenshot of this, you can take a screenshot and then make all your adjustments. And I really encourage you to play around with a lot of these values just to kind of understand how they work. Also, if you go to blender.org, you can learn about each one of these nodes and what they do and how they work and their interrelationships. Uh, at first, you really don't have to know too much. You just kind of want to emulate what other people have done. And then you can really start to dig in and understand, not just by experimenting, but by reading how they all work. That's it. I hope you enjoyed that and you got to a general generic wood-like color in, you know, 10 minutes time. Pretty nice.